Whole new meaning on that song lyric, Black Hole Sun. Scientists at NASA have given us some amazing images. And they've discovered there's actually an enormous dark hole over our sun. Corey Powell's at Art Large, Discover Magazine, here to look at these images. Nice to see you, Corey. Yeah. What is this? A uh, weather map on the sun. You'll notice uh, part of the sun is missing. So this is, this is a picture of the sun in, in ultraviolet rays. What you're seeing is this is three and a half million degree plasma erupting from the surface of the sun. This part that's missing, the reason it's dark, is that whole chunk of the sun basically ripped off, blew out, and is coming our way at about two million miles an hour. Our way. Our way. <laughs> That doesn't sound good. Well, the, I mean, this kind of thing happens all the time, but you don't very often see something that big. So I, I'm going to go all Carl Sagan on you here for a second. So this is, this is about 80 times as wide as the Earth. If you're looking at the Earth on this scale, it's okay. about that large. So this is an incredible chunk of the sun that's flying out. Um, what happens when it, when it hits our planet, it causes auroras, it wiggles the magnetic field. The, most, the thing you really worry about is it can disrupt your GPS, it can mess with your communication satellites, it can mess uh -huh. with your power lines. Is that like a solar flare? Or? So, yeah, so, this is, so, this is, so these hot spots are where things are, it's where the, the things are really in, kind of intense and bubbling. This is where it's basically reached the point where it just kind of completely blew off. You're actually not seeing the hot gas here because it's no longer on the sun. Did, did we, it's coming into our did face. Did we ever know this before? Or, or did we not take note of it. Well, we know it's really very recent that we've even been able to see these things. And so we kind of knew, you know, there, there's this constant low level thing, you know, it, a few million dollars a year damages more or less uh, just our solar satellites, power lines, things. We knew that the sun was, was messing with us and we didn't exactly know mm. why. Now you see why. And the real worry is this is actually, a, believe it or not, this is a small one. This is a minor wow. one. Wow. Um, can you tell us what this means then? So what, what this means is this is what the sun does all the time, and we don't really know why it does it. Um, there's, a, there's an 11-year cycle of solar activity, and right now we're going into a time of peak activity. And that's when all those things I was talking about before, you know, we, we really need to watch for your power lines, your yeah. satellites, for all that. But you um, just said something there. You said it happens all the time. If it happens all the time, is there a real risk to us? Well, or are we just noticing now? Well, so, the, so, there, so there's, there's two parts. I mean, there's, there's the stuff like this. Like I said, this is actually not even a particularly bad one. So this is what happens all the time that we weren't really noticing, that See. now we're starting okay. to understand and forecast. But there are also there are much more intense ones. Uh, there was a giant solar flare in 1962, right before we really had a whole lot of satellites, an even bigger one in oh, 1859. Wow. And if something like that happened again, that could, yeah. that, can you, actually, that could cause a global blackout. You always talk about, you know, solar flares as the biggest danger on a large scale. So we will see. Corey, thank you. Excellent yeah. explanation. Oh, well, thank you. And uh, we'll call you Carl Sagan next time, okay? <laughs> cool? Yeah. Millions and millions of Earths would fit in this picture. Yeah, nice. Government health officials say heat waves are the deadliest extreme weather event. During the last decade, more than 150 people died from heat stroke in New York City alone. The Centers for Disease Control says people with chronic conditions, including obesity, are susceptible to the heat and need to stay cool and hydrated when temperatures rise. Children in Los Angeles are drinking less soda. L.A. County researchers say the percentage of kids who drink at least one soda every day dropped 14 percent between 2007 and 2011. Doctors say campaigns to educate parents about the negative effects of soda appear to be working. And Japanese researchers have engineered a strain of rice that may stop a common illness. The scientists added an antibody to rice that can fight off rotavirus. The sickness can lead to extreme dehydration, especially in developing countries. There is a vaccine, but doctors say the engineered rice would be a cheap and effective way to prevent rotavirus. Those are some of today's top health stories. I'm Vanita Nair, CBS News, New York. More than 640 people have been killed by a heat wave in India. The temperatures reached nearly 50 degrees Celsius in some regions. Indian authorities have warned that the conditions are set to continue over the coming days. Let's get Tom Sater on this. What, what, Tom, what led to the deaths of, of so many people? I mean, 50 degrees Celsius is extremely hot, it but is. it's not 
uncommonly no. hot in some parts of the world for months at a time. So, so what went so wrong, tragically wrong here? Uh, you know, uh, this happens every year as far as the heat building in India because it's pre-monsoon heat. But it's extreme in this case, Hala, because in some states of India, it's been going on since the middle of April. But it's the nighttime low temperatures that are staying extremely high. It is so tragic. I mean, we have deaths, obviously, from natural severe weather elements, but these are preventable. The, the uh, symptoms coming out to us, of course, and we've all seen those who may have suffered from heat exhaustion or heat stroke. The pictures I'm showing you from India are from all different areas. First, we were in South Central in Hyderabad. Here is Allahabad. This is North Central. It's kind of south of New Delhi. This is Jammu. This is up into the north. All of these states are reporting fatalities where the temperatures for days on end have been building into the 40s. This is on the East Coast in Bhubaneswar. I could show you a picture that looks just like that on the extreme eastern side of the country in Rajasthan or Gujarat. It is one in the morning and the temperature has just dropped from 39 down to 40. I mean, this is over 100 degrees. So again, the heat building and it's all over the entire region. We're waiting for the monsoon rains, which are still out in the Bay of Bengal. Now, eventually they will start their northern progression and cool things down. But the heat has been building uh, faster than we have typically seen in years past in many states well up to the north that are typically not used to this. But it's being felt across the entire country. So let's run through a few factors for you. The numbers are already high enough this time of year, but when you start to tag on three to even five degrees higher than normal, what we're finding is it's uh, most of the fatalities, and this just jumped from 430 to over 640 in the last 12 hours. They're still uh, assessing the, the damage here, of course, when it comes to the fatalities, but these numbers of what we've seen just in the last 24 hours, even in Pakistan as well, 48. But we have also seen that they're over 50 years old, working class, mainly elderly, but we're also getting reports out of Calcutta where a couple of taxi drivers lost their life in the extreme heat. So they're pulling all taxis off the road that do not have any air conditioning for at least five hours. But look at the numbers. They're going to continue to be in the 40s in uh, Ahmadabad, in, in Nagpur. This is where we first started noticing it. In Nagpur, it's 45, 46, 47, and kept build, building each day. But when you have nighttime lows that are still in the 30s, that's when it gets tough. Areas of red extreme heat. Now, this map for tomorrow is much better than it was yesterday when we had areas of red to the north. But we're waiting, really, for these rains to move in, Holland. Until they do, I think we're going to be following, uh, again, this story to continue for days on end because usually it begins June 1st, but it's going to take a month even to make its way to the north. Plus, it's an El Nino year, and that seems to stifle the rainfall in India. Could be a, a bad year for the monsoons. Let's hope not. Hello there. During the summer months, many of us crave a good sunny and dry spell and a little bit of warmth to go with it. Now, the best weather setups for that to occur, where high pressure is either based to the east of us and we drag in hot air off a uh, warming near continent, or indeed with that high pressure system right over the top of us, a steady build up of warmth over a number of days as the air stagnates and just circles around gently across the UK. But there does become a point where that heat has more of an impact than just a rise in barbecue and ice cream sales. It can also have an impact on health as well. And when that comes into play, the Met Office issue heat wave warnings across parts of the UK. Now, for those to be issued, we need a few trigger temperatures to be reached. And now those trigger temperatures are very much dependent on where you are in the UK. By daytime, they have to be somewhere between 28 and 32 degrees, if not higher. And they have to be followed by nighttime temperatures as well, somewhere in the region of 15 to 18 degrees, if not more. Now, when we get these over a prolonged spell of time, this is where it can have an increasing impact on the health of those with chronic illnesses, the young and the elderly. And for more details on how heat impacts your health, heads to the NHS website. But don't forget, throughout the summer months, you can always see where the temperatures are going for where you live on the BBC Weather website and, of course, on the BBC Weather app. Bye for now. So many of you are talking about the skies over Kern County lighting up with a meteor shower tonight. The National Weather Service confirming just moments ago that big ball of fire in the sky was, in fact, a meteor. 23 ABC's Andrew Wirth joins us now from our live center with video and pictures our viewers are sending us right now. Andrew? That's right, Tim and Jackie here in the Life Center. We have been getting many posts, as you said, Tim. National Weather Service out of Reno confirming that this is a meteor shower expected to start tonight and go through Friday night. Let's take a look at some of these posts here. This was from Dina McCarthy, as you can see. I'll zoom in real quick. Two big balls of fire coming across the sky right there. Zoom back out. Take a look at this next one. You can see a tree kind of make that figure out there. Again, two big balls of fire coming across. There, just one. That's Rodolfo Cruz. Thank you, Rodolfo. We'll take a look at this video now. I'll make that a little bit larger. As you can see right here, 
single ball of fire coming across the sky. Very good video coming in there from one of our viewers. We'll, we'll get out of this one real quick and go to our next one. The next one coming in from Nick Gonzalez. One of the best pictures that we've seen. You can see that it was zoomed in and enhanced just a little bit, but two very big balls of fire coming across there, and that is an awesome picture. Thank you from Nick Gonzalez. And then one of our last videos here, another one coming across the sky, some people down here. Just a huge ball of fire, and we thank everybody for it. Facebook messages, Twitter, everything, emails, calls, all of those things. Thank you guys for sending us all of those. And like I said, this has been seen all over the western states, places as far as Las Vegas, Nevada, Utah, all over California, down in San Diego. We were getting calls about people uh, at the San Diego station down there asking about it. And 